Hey permaculture people, it's Teddy with uh, Seed of Life Permaculture Design and Landscaping and uh, the Dirt Goat Permaculture Podcast. I've started a podcast the past uh, couple months. Uh, I got the sixth episode out now, so check that out. Um, I want to relate podcast uh, topics directly to um, what I'm doing on the land and vice versa. So this is an example of a permaculture technique uh, or method. <laughs> In my case, it is, well, it's actually more of a strategy. We're, we're, we're using swales a lot on our landscape because of the scale and the amount of slope and the way they line up, the way they, the way they uh, are on the land is fairly convenient. You can see these, all these different flags. Uh, white flags mean from going right to left if you're below them, and orange is left to right. So I have the swales going just slightly off contour in different directions so that the water goes back and forth across the slope from one swale to another. So this one is uphill far away and downhill right here. And that is the intentional overflow. And when the water fills this uh, trench of the swale it overflows in that little spot where I left I piled up no dirt so that's just at grade so the water can fill the trench up to grade and then it goes through this little uh, overflow rock spot I used maybe half the rocks that came out of this trench and it goes right into this swale that's gonna start here and it goes in this crazy loop down there and around and then somewhere in the middle there and it meets up with one coming off that orange one coming off the fence it meets up with it and they come to a convergence spot where it's going to spill over and hit another swale that goes that way and eventually crosses over onto the neighbor's property but let's talk about this swale for now uh, i used it i made it with the bcs it's the first time i've done that with the rotary plow set at like the i don't know two from the lowest i think so it didn't set very low because the ground was still half frozen, so the, the plow basically scraped the sod off and then hit this layer of frozen ground, and then I uh, matic hacked all that into these chunks and then did a little bit more matic scraping to um, make it pitch the way I want, just slightly going downhill that way. My, my contour measurements got a little weird somewhere, and I started going uphill about halfway through the slope for a little bit before it went back back down so I had to manually dig deeper at that spot and then cart soil back over here to build up this mound because there's an unequal distribution of soil and uh, depth of the trench. You can see that the trench is a lot um, shallower here at the beginning to make up for that anomaly that happened in the A-frame contour marking but as you see it pretty quickly gets to uh, normal, consistent depth, and I actually had to, I had to modify the uh, the contour line because you can see over here it started to get. Um, I, that's where the the marker was, and it's where it started to go uphill. So I had to kind of turn the the contour downhill more. So that's why it was just scraped. I realized it was going too far uphill, so I I tur I, I, I made this sweep broader so it actually makes a more convenient shape to the swale it makes it uh smoother and a more uh gradual turn but uh that took you know a long day it basically started in the late morning yesterday and today and now i'm just going to well after i after i did all that digging i um i raked it once and then i hoed all the chunks just with a regular hoe, just like you would a, a you know normal garden, and uh, and then I raked it again to kind of repile all the dirt, so it's kind of evenly distributed. And then I brought the broad fork up and down it, and tried to loosen the you know the clumps and rip apart any sod in there, and to penetrate into the ground at grade below this mound because this isn't very deep soil; it's only maybe five or six at the most inches before it hits sod, so it's. It's really just at the beginning stages, and that's why I'm going to plant a soil building edible ground cover uh, either in the form of buckwheat or oats 
I have to see which one is the more appropriate for this time and place. And then I'm going to seed the path with clover. Um, so this will just be re-vegetated. This swale, the scale of swales is too big to uh, justify trying to fill with wood chips. Although it's not so deep where I couldn't use a lot of that extra hoogle wood. That pile over there, these piles of brush are for burning. Or I mean uh, chipping. And those logs are going to be used in the garden somehow. But there's more hoogle wood piles also on the edge of the woods where I could fill some uh, some swale trenches with them. But I think what I might do instead is wherever there's these weird depressions between these contour lines, like this hole right here, I might just accentuate this hole and dig it out, make sort of a pond, see if it fills with water, see if it wants to be a micro pond. If it doesn't hold water, then I'll fill that hole with excess wood to become a, a hoogle pocket. Um, and there's a couple spots like that, kind of in between swales where there's just a depression, like over over here, this might become a hoogle micro pond kind of rain garden thing. So I might end up doing that with all my extra hoogle wood, but as you can see, there are lots of flags, lots of swale possibilities. I have kind of a hierarchy of you know, starting at the top of the watershed of this section over there where water collects and bringing it, you know, slowly downhill across the slope. And then it's going to go into this swale, like I said before. So this is all close to contour, just going slowly, slightly downhill. I know it's hard to tell, and a lot of times it looks like you're going uphill. It's really deceiving to the eye. And like I said, with an A-frame, it's not the most accurate tool. It's not like a laser. It's pretty accurate and I and I pitch it um, decidedly enough where I shouldn't end up having backwards slope like I did last time. It always seems to happen a little bit somewhere and it's just the fact that there's holes in the ground that skew the actual measurement of contour by putting you lower than the hole of the ground, the hole with a W of the ground of the contour is. So you kind of got to use your eye and uh, while you're running the machine, if, if it seems like it's going off, kind of just veer and use your instinct a little bit. I'm, I'm learning how to do that with the machine. It's easier with a shovel and mattock and stuff because it's so slow. But you can see that, that swale over by the corner. That's meant to catch all the drainage from these beds because they're off contour. They weren't even tried to be on contour. They're parallel to the shape of the landmass. It's a plateau there, and I wanted to maintain that. So I, I observed the water flow downhill from towards that big oak tree towards me. Towards us is downhill, so everything on this side grew bigger and better and greener because it had more water. Uh, so the water's coming this direction either way, but it's also going to that corner right there. And uh, so that's why this swale is going to pick up whatever drains out of there because that whole garden is bordered by a hoogle path border thing, so it's it's low and has water holding capacity and it'll drain right there so that water will go into this swale with these orange ones meet up with this white one that came from the from like i said the overflow of this swale i made so it's going all the way around come in here meeting up with this swale that's coming from there and then it's going to overflow and hit this next swale that's running sort of parallel on its own contour line to to the the one by the fence and then it goes and piddles off that way and then basically everything else in but those are the major spots because it's like catching water there catching water there and where this dumps it's caught again and that happens to bring it back to where this catchment also comes so this this confluence right here this is where all the basic all the major water of this watershed which is distinguished by you know, over there is a separate watershed. There's sort of a ridge in the, um, in the, uh, the, what am I trying to say? The bedrock, the, um, uh, whatever, we're not, what is it? You know what I mean? There's a ridge over there, so it's another, <laughs> it's another watershed. So all the contours beyond that way are, are dealing with another, um, another, you know, water movement situation. So everything that's coming from this garden and this oak tree down this way is all meeting here and then winding its way over to the edge of that other watershed.
Um, so that's what's going on. It's, uh, that's permaculture in action, living the design, observing and interacting with the land, looking at how the water collects and how it can move and how it can create paths and beds and uh, create the uh, food forest and uh, veggie integrated, you know, productive, perennial and annual, successionally directed landscape. That's what's up. All right. Take it easy.